Why hello hello folks. Today we're gonna be making another one of those tier lists. Everyone loves tier lists. Uh, this one's gonna be a bit different. I'm gonna rank Warframes by power. I'm not gonna rank them by how powerful they are in game to play. I'm gonna rank them by how powerful they are canonically in the Warframe universe. Because there are a couple of Warframes that like, they're not all equal. Some of them have fairly just, you know, grounded powers. And some of them can do some stuff that's that's honestly uh, reality breaking <laughs> would be the that would be the word to use reality breaking. So so let's let's find out which Warframes uh, canonically in universe are actually the most powerful. So we're just gonna rank these by by release order and and see when we get to the good stuff. So first of all, we have Poster Boy Excalibur. Uh, he, his power, he was the first Warframe, so maybe they didn't have it all figured out yet, what they could or could not do. His power is that he can summon a sword. <laughs> That's his power. Uh, he is not very, very powerful compared to some of the other people on this list. He's a swordsman, he can, he can blind enemies, okay, sure. Um, he's just a very powerful soldier, not much more than that. Uh, so he actually canonically is among the weakest Warframes and ends up in the D tier. Number two on the list is Mag and Mag controls magnetism. She controls one of the four powers that define how our universe works. <laughs> like, theoretically she could maybe like just change the the rotation of a planet. <laughs> That's Possibly something she could do. Uh, there's really no limit to it. Um, Mag might be the most powerful out of all Warframes. At least she's up there. Um, we don't see her use the powers to that extent. Okay, we we see her like you know crush enemies from the inside and, and redirect bullets and stuff like that. But just the idea that she can control magnetism means that she actually breaks reality. Um, that is insane and not possible. <laughs> so, so um, she's not the most powerful Warframe, but she's up there. She's up there, okay? So we're gonna put her in the S tier. Vault con con controls electricity, which is also like just, you know, ooh, electromagnetism. She's also up there with like just, you know, um, actually, actually manipulating the powers of reality. M maybe not really, but, you know. There, there seems to be some sort of wonkiness with with uh, time as well, because he can he can run very fast. At least we can see from the the uh, the new sort of like intro cinematic that he also has like sort of lightning fast reflexes to the point where the rest of the world appears to move slowly to him. So we're talking about like the Flash stuff like that. Um, very very powerful. Not reality breaking though. So. Uh, he's up there being able to like just do fields of electrical discharges and stuff is very strong um, You know what compared to some of these other guys. Maybe that's not maybe that's not even enough for the A tier uh, In Warframe maybe being able to like just create surges of electricity across an entire battlefield is not good enough to to reach S tier So we're probably gonna have to put him in B then we have Loki. Loki's a trickster and a manipulator that he can... Ooh, he can disarm enemies. Um, he, the switch teleport is probably the only thing he has that's sort of like noteworthy. Where you can like actually teleport for real and change places with people. Uh, but, but he cannot do anything spectacular. And, you know, okay, he can go invisible for a while, but so can some other guys as well. He's, he's canonically not particularly powerful. D tier. Rhino is a little bit interesting because he's like the heaviest Warframe. He weighs several tons or something. So if he jumps and like lands on you, you're probably just going to get crushed. Uh, the only thing interesting about him is that it says that like his stomp, his number four ability, sort of like disrupts time <laughs> in a way and leaves people in stasis. But that's uh, nah, 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 not really, not really. He's just big, strong, heavy, d d tanky, but... Uh, he can't do anything significant or reality breaking or stuff like that. He's just a soldier. Also canonically not particularly powerful. Ash got ninja powers. So he can summon shadow clones of himself. 
That's pretty cool. And he can go invisible. That's pretty cool. But that's about it. He's a bit stronger than these other guys because he does seem to have some sort of magical powers. But not to the point where he can like create wholesale destruction. It's still limited to a very, fairly small area of influence. He's an assassin. He can take out like 50 people by himself. We see that in his Leverian entry. But it's going to take him a while. So, you know. It's a bit higher. C tier. That's, that's where Ash is. Ember though, Ember though, like, okay, it used to be that she had a power called World on Fire, where she could just set stuff on fire, and you can't put that fire out, they're just gonna burn until they die, so we're talking, uh, you know, Amaterasu, Naruto, sort of like Sasuke Black Flame powers, woo, <laughs> they're just cool, she can't do that anymore, but but it's still cool. Uh, now she can summon meteors instead to crash down from the sky. And she can still burn things. And the, the ability to manipulate fire is respectable. It's not reality breaking, but it is very respectable. So she's gonna go into the B tier together with Volt. Uh, Trinity is a support frame. I mean, yeah, sure. She can, she can heal and she can create life links and she can drain an enemy of, of their health and their, and their, their energy but just like a single enemy she cannot break reality <laughs> she's not that dangerous compared to most of the other guys no she's, she's down there the these guys are the ones that like oh if, if one of these is being sent to where you are i mean you're still probably you're still probably fucked you're not as fucked as if some of these guys up here get sent to take you out okay frost he's got ice powers he can freeze stuff Kind of in the same vein as Ember, I guess. We're putting, like, B tier seems to be sort of like where the elemental powers go. You can control electricity, control fire, control ice, right? And, and just ooh, cool elemental magic stuff. You're, pr you're pretty much in the middle of the pack, power-wise, if that's your power. And, and Frost goes there as well. Respectable. It's respectable. Now, Nyx is more interesting because she can mind control, <laughs> okay? And being able to mind control kinda sets you apart because, hey, even if if you can't nuke things, you can brain control the guy who has the nuclear codes. <laughs> so, so in theory, like just whoever she can manipulate and that person's power, sort of just that's that's her limit, and that puts her pretty high on the list. That that also com combined with the fact that she can like absorb all incoming damage and make herself functionally um, immortal, and and she can turn enemies against each other and and stuff like that. It's 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 actually actually a step above just being able to zap lightning or or shoot fire from your fingers. I'm gonna say that mind control is more dangerous in the right hands. It's a scarier power. Uh, that you can create way, way more destruction with if you really think about it. So Nyx goes into the A tier. Banshee's spooky because she's got sound powers. So she can she can rupture eardrums and do sound quakes and stuff. And, and she can also remove all sound from an area, which is kind of frightening, actually, if you consider like what would it like, be like to fight against this this Warframe. So imagine you're your squad of people and you're trying to coordinate how to fight against her and take her out. And suddenly you can't talk to each other because no one can hear what anyone else is saying. Because she just removed all sound from the area. <laughs> Which is super frightening. Uh, that being said, I mean, sure, yes, she has her sound quake. And we know that in the game it does, it does a, a laughably small amount of damage. We get that. But in theory, if you just look at what you can do with the ability to just... Um, basically crank up to, to an, uh, an almost infinite high decibel number, the vibrations could basically just shake a city down to, to rubble. Uh, in theory, you could do that. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Banshee is also a step above just being able to shoot lightning from your fingers. Um, I think sound quakes can be, can be kind of scary in concept. All right, okay, Saren. <laughs> Saren is the walking war crime, okay? She, there's a reason why we made laws against this people. 
There are laws against biological warfare. Saren fights by spreading, like, fast afflicting viruses, which is not cool, Ballas. <laughs> not cool to even make this Warframe. Um, she'll kill you and you won't even get close to her. She'll kill you from a kilometer away by just uh, creating a chain of infection bouncing from person to person until it hits you. And she's probably gonna kill everyone in the entire city by just shooting out poison, not even poison, but her viral spores. Uh, extremely frightening. You just deploy her in an area and then 10 minutes later everything in that area is just dead. So she's up there in the S tier. <laughs> she's one of the worst. Um, never ever want to face off against her. Making her was a crime. Uh, then you got Vauban. He, he's an engineer. He dabbles in traps. He lays mines. He can call down an orbital strike. So he himself isn't that powerful. He just uses a lot of tools. Deploys these little Tesla traps and, and balls and, and locks people in place and stuff. Uh, very much uh, support focused. But he can call down an orbital laser to just shoot people on the surface. So I guess that puts him in the C tier. All right, then we come to Nova, and Nova has an argument for why she should be number one on the list, because her power is manipulating matter-antimatter, <laughs> which is like, she can, do you know what happens if you can, if you could create antimatter? Do you know what happens if antimatter reacts to, with, with matter? I mean, it, it's annihilation, both of them cease to exist. She, one of the rules of the universe is that you, matter can't actually be, be destroyed, it can only change shape, it can only change, change form. Uh, Nova has the ability to actually destroy matter, uh, which is reality breaking. Uh, she can also create wormholes to teleport. And so she can, she can go anywhere at any time and she can just make matter and particles cease to exist. Um, almost almost put her up here in the highest category there's an argument for why she should be if anyone could be the most powerful like like nova nova would be the one so so i'm i'm, I'm respectfully putting her in the s tier but she's one of the most powerful warframes necros can raise the dead <laughs> if we're talking about reality breaking stuff what the implications here right the implications is that there is an afterlife and people have souls and all that. He has an ability called Soul Punch. He can punch your soul out of your body. Okay, so if we're if we're talking scary on a philosophical plane and discussing concepts of the afterlife and stuff like that, they exist and Necros can manipulate the afterlife. <laughs> How, Ballas? How did you come up with this? But no, just the fact that, like, oh, you're fighting against him. Well, he summons your best friend, and now you have to fight against the corpse of your best friend. That's probably gonna be bad for morale, I'm gonna say. He is A tier, I'm gonna say. He just, he can't do it on the scale that the S tier can. He can't, like, destroy an entire planet by himself. But if you just look at like how frightening his powers are, he's he's very very scary, which is appropriate. Valkyr's a soldier, frontline soldier. She's tanky, but she fights with a melee weapon, and she just jumps into the fray and rips stuff up. Um, that's gonna put her pretty far down in the list of actual power uh, compared to some of these other warframes. She's just she's just a grunt, to be honest. Oberon can create holy grass. He can create a lawn, and if you step on the lawn, you take some more damage. That's about it. He can also lift people up into the air, and then he can slam them down, which is not that impressive. Oberon does not have any sort of, of in-game cool things he can do that are like actually, like, actually impressive or anything like that. So... Oberon is also canonically not a particularly powerful Warframe. 
Zephyr is a bit stronger. Zephyr can fly and Zephyr can dive bomb. And Zephyr can create... She can manipulate the air and wind. Wind manipulating powers is kind of interesting. So she can create tornadoes. That suck people up. That's pretty cool. Uh, just It doesn't seem like she should be on the same level as being able to call down meteors from the sky. Or just or just uh, chain lightning, stuff like that. But I don't know, it's, it's tornadoes though. You know... You know what? Let's be fair. Let's put her with the other elemental frames, okay? This is Avatar: The Last Airbender here. This is the this is the Airbender. So if we have a Firebender, then we have an Airbender as well. Same tier. Now Hydroid is different because Hydroid isn't exactly just a Waterbender. Hydroid can't just manipulate water. Hydroid apparently can create a pocket dimension, <laughs> right? He he can he can create a pocket dimension that exists only of water. The deep, the endless deep. And he can pull you into this dimension where the only thing that exists is water. And then he can drown you in there. <laughs> that is extremely scary. Uh, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. If he wants to, he'll just suck you into the water dimension and then you'll drown. And you can't do a single thing about it. So that's that's a step above. That's a step above. Hydroid, A tier. Then we have Mirage. Mirage can manipulate light, light and shadow. So she can create illusions and, and prisms and stuff. Uh, she can create a, 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 a ball that shoots laser. And bounces around. That's pretty cool. And she can sort of like booby trap the env environment with like light traps that explode. Um, and create like these visual sort of doppelgangers of herself, but not just a visual illusion. These doppelgangers can also fire guns, and apparently this works. <laughs> so I don't know. They're 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 semi real in some way. Clearly, she is not just your normal soldier. The question is like, do, do you put her in the C tier or do you put her in the B tier? Uh, the fact that she sort of <clears throat> seems to be able to will some of these things into actual existence, maybe put her a step above. Maybe we put her in the B tier. She can, she can shoot laser beams. That's pretty destructive. Okay, Limbo. More reality breaking. Limbo can exist in two dimensions at just jump between them. Limbo can pull you into a different reality. Where you can no longer interact with your own reality. You can see it. You can walk around in it. But you can't interact with it. That is that is frightening. And reality breaking. The problem is. He doesn't really have a whole lot of destructive things. He can do with that power. He can jump himself in and out of the rift. And he can pull other people in and out of the rift. But that's, that's about it. And it seems to be limited to like things of people size. He can create a small rift portal, like the Cataclysm. He can create a small sort of like ball uh, where you can pull in everything. But he can't maintain it for very long. So he is reality breaking. He just can't do as many cool things with his reality breaking powers as some of the other people can so i wanted to for a while to put him in the s tier i think i'm gonna have to put him in the a tier even though he can break reality he just can't do anything cool when he breaks reality mesa has guns mesa has guns and she can shoot her guns that's it she has two pistols and her power is that she's really good at shooting her two pistols that puts her <laughs> In the D tier. Alright, so Chroma. We don't know a whole lot about Chroma. I mean, Chroma, Chroma killed some sentient or something and wears the sentient corpse as a pelt and then uses some sentient powers to create some elemental stuff. But but it, it's just like it's got some fire breathing and some shielding on himself and some damage buffs, but not much more. And Chroma's own powers are very sort of diffuse, what he even can or can't do. So Chroma, canonically, not particularly powerful. Maybe just because he is infused with sentient powers, we'll put him a bit higher and put him in the C tier. He's a bit step above just being a normal soldier. But we haven't seen Chroma do anything impressive. Equinox is scary. Equinox can manipulate the air itself and turn the air into knives. You can, 
you you get cut by the air. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Equinox is now on your ship. Suddenly everyone around you just starts bleeding and just wounds opening up left and right because you're being cut by the air and there's not a whole lot you can do to defend against that. Also in in night form she can put everyone to sleep. Which is interesting, and then walk around and just and just stab them while they're sleeping. Just <laughs> also spooky. Uh, being able to put a whole big area to sleep, and also being able to turn the air into knives. Uh, very very frightening powers. Put her in the A tier. Okay, you might think that Atlas is also in the soldier class, and just oh, but he can punch real hard. Well, no. Well, no. First of all. He can create stone golems, he can petrify enemies and turn them into stone, but more importantly, according to his Leverian, Atlas punched a meteor <laughs> and, and destroyed it. Atlas went up into space and punched a meteor to stop it from crashing into a planet. Do you have any idea what sort of power you would need to be able to generate with your fist and how t tough that fist would have to be to be able to punch a meteor? Atlas might be S tier. <laughs> but we're we're going to put Atlas in the A tier. Because um, it, it's not reality breaking, but he punched a meteor. Okay, that is A tier. He punched a meteor. Wukong's power is that there's two of him. <laughs> so so it's more powerful than Excalibur because there's only one Excalibur, but there are two Wukongs. Uh, he can also turn himself into a cloud, which, which I guess is kind of cool. So, C tier. All right, so Ivara is sort of like your tactical, sort of like undercover sniper, special forces soldier, right? She can go invisible. She has a, like a myriad of different sort of arrows that she can do different things with, like mute sounds and go invisible and stuff like that. And she has her cool Artemis bow. So she's still she's still soldier tier, but she's got a lot more tools in her kit than just your normal soldier. So she goes a little bit higher than that into the C tier. All right, Nesha's got some godly powers. Nesha can summon these holy s divine spears that shoot out of the ground and impale enemies, that's kind of cool. Uh, Nezha can teleport. Nezha can uh, burn the ground that he walks on. But it's still like just, it's street level, right? If you look at Marvel superheroes, you got you got the, uh, the uh, Galactus, right? And Silver Surfer, the galactic level threats. Then you've got like the 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 A tier heroes, the ones that can like ooh, destroy entire cities and all of that. And then you got the street level heroes, guys like Daredevil, guys like Spider Man, stuff like that. That's that's sort of where Nesha at. It's street level powers, so only goes in the C tier. Inaros is a scrub, all right? Inaros, he is the protector of Mars. He dies off screen. We don't even know what killed him. We just know that he left one day and he never came back. So he didn't even have some sort of like cool canonical death where he did something rad to die. No, he just dies off screen like a chump. And he 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 can throw pocket sand. No, he, he has sand powers. He can control the sand. So he can create the sandstorm, which doesn't do anything. And he can throw sand in your eyes. And then he can cover himself in sand armor. He can he can actually sort of devour a single enemy if he spends 10 minutes doing it. And then he can create a sand golem out of that enemy that lasts for like 10 seconds and doesn't really do anything. So, scrub tier powers. Almost put him in the F tier, but then he's also tanky, right? He's also tanky and a soldier. So I guess I guess we have to put him in the D tier anyway. But there's an argument for putting down here an F. He can't do shit. Titania is a little bit scary because she can turn herself super small, but she can still hurt you as if she was regular sized. <laughs> and she can summon these razor flies to just zoom around in the air and, and rip things to shreds. And there's like, she's extremely fast. 
And there's not a whole lot you can do to stop her because you can't hit her because she's too small of a target and she's moving too fast. And she can actually wipe things out pretty quickly, but she's still attacking you with guns and swords, even though she's just very small and stuff like that. Uh, you have to have these large area of effect attacks where you can just wipe out big, big things without even having to aim if you want to be higher uh, than the C tier. So, sorry, sorry. B tier up, that's all AoE or reality breaking. Nidus is tricky <clears throat> because it sort of depends on how far his powers go, okay? So if you look at, at the infestation, if a planet becomes infested, if the infestation actually takes root in a planet, that planet is fucked. It's done. You can just, you know, re redirect all the flights. We're not landing on this planet anymore. It's it's gone. But there are different, like, strands of infestations. We know about sort of like the gray strain, which is the one on Deimos. We know about the, the mutalist strain, which is the one on Eris. Uh, all the Warframes have the Hellman strain, and it appears that the Hellman strain doesn't sort of like just spread by itself the way that these other strains do. So it appears that Nidus can't actually sort of spread the infestation. He can manifest infestation with like his number four, and it's there for a while, and he can summon these maggots and stuff. But it doesn't appear that like just w wherever Nidus goes, oh, now this area is infested. Because if that was the case, you can't, you can't deploy Nidus anywhere. You can't use Nidus in missions, you just have to have it locked up and never ever use it. So while Nidus can fight with infestation and, and this gross virulence and, and all of that, and he can do some pretty destructive things with it, I don't think it's on the level of, oh, if you put if you deploy Nidus, this entire planet is just gone. I don't think that's where we're at. So Nidus, he goes into the B tier. Octavia is kind of wonky because like you know in the game right if you play Octavia she's one of the most powerful Warframes but it's just like her, her powers are just the powers of music and it doesn't really translate lore wise into anything sort of significant yeah she, she plays music while she fights and she is lore relevant because her playing her song was the signal to the Warframes to start the the betrayal Right and 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 destroy the Orokin Empire, but but if you just look at what her powers can do in universe, it's just she just likes to play music while she kills people. <laughs> That's kind of it. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. She can the ooh the siren song. She can shoot enemies bullets back at them, and and they they forget what they're supposed to do because they listen to her rollerball instead. It's I guess I guess it's a bit more than just being a regular soldier, but it doesn't seem like much when you when you actually look at in universe what her music powers would do. All right, Harrow is a priest, so he is primarily dangerous to little boys. I knew you were gonna go there when you said he's a priest. <laughs> I was like, I know where this is going. <laughs> Other than that, his powers are mostly about self-flagellation and hurting himself. So he's very, very dangerous to himself and to little boys. Other than that, there's like nothing really noteworthy about him. It's like when you play Chains of Harrow, yeah, Rel is scary. All of the spooky ghost stuff, that's Rel who's doing that. It's not actually Harrow who's doing any of that. Harrow's powers aren't like shown at all in that quest. So we're gonna we're gonna put him low. He's bottom tier. Uh unless you're a little boy. In that case, the boy is the bottom tier. No, don't put that in. Oh my god, that is too dark. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that in. No, that is I'm gonna leave that in. Okay, Gara's frightening though. Gara, she can create a cloud of shattered glass that is just orbiting around her and if you walk close to her you're just gonna get ripped apart in a cloud of shattered glass she can also turn enemies into glass which is <laughs> icky we're gonna have to put her pretty high 
Um, if if we're saying that Volt can cover an area in like electricity and chain lightning, and Ember can just set an entire area on fire, then that's probably where Gara is as well with her cloud of glass shrapnel. Good enough for B tier. Korra's got the power of BDSM and whips and barbed wire <laughs> and 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 strangle dome and ensnaring. It's all very sexy. Um, yeah, it's probably not very fun to fight against Korra, but unless you're into that, unless you're into that, in which case it's super fun to fight against Korra. Uh, but but it's it's C tier. That's sort of where her power's at. It's C tier. Revenant is spookier, right? Revenant's got those vampire powers. Revenant can mind control people. Revenant can suck the life force out of them. And also, Revenant is now infused with spinny sentient energy. So it's it's either A tier or B tier. Uh, B tier for the spinny sentient energy, but maybe even up to A tier because he can mind control stuff. And if Nyx is A tier, then Revenant is probably also A tier because he can mind control and he can do spinny laser stuff. Garuda has the power of gore, gore and blood and ripping things apart and 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 draining life force from enemies by impaling them and other cool vampire shit. She is street level, she is soldier tier. She's not all that powerful, all things considered. She's pretty fast though, but uh, it's like, it's, it's D or C tier. Even her alt just sort of marks targets for death, but then you still have to go in and, and just hit them with your weapons anyway. So she can't, she can't do this sort of like wholesale destruction that other Warframes can. I think she's, I think she's soldier level in terms of actual power. I think she's pretty low. Uh, Baruch is not much better. Baruch is, uh, he's the pacifist Warframe, right? So he doesn't even hurt you in the first place. Unless he gets mad, and when he gets mad, then he punches you. <laughs> so, so, um... His powers are mostly defensive and 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 about like not attacking until he gets really mad, and then he pulls out his big punch fists, and that is that is that is D tier. So Hildren has Valkyrie powers, whatever that means. Not Valkyr, she's the Berserker, but Hildren, she's the Valkyrie. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, she's got she's got a big muscly body and she's got big abs. So that's that's she and Rhino. They got the they got the muscles down. Uh, Hildrin also can cover huge areas in in radiation, which is nice. And she she can fly into the air and fire down rockets and stuff. So I guess she's a bit of a cut above. Uh, just, just, just your, your lowest ones, but nothing impressive. Nothing impressive. Okay, Wisp is one of the dumbest Warframes in terms of power. Wisp goes into the S tier. Let me explain why. I'm not talking about the fact that she can, like, summon a copy of herself and, and summon in stuff from, from the moats from other dimensions. Her alt, her number four ability, if you read the, the uh, ability description, she opens a portal to the sun. And she fires out a sunbeam from her portal to the sun. If, I think, I think there was some sort of post and like, they did the math. And like, if you opened a portal to the sun, which is about this big... Um, it would it would it would nuke an area of maybe like twenty miles around you instantly. Everything would just turn to ash. Um, you can't <laughs> you can't you can't open a portal to the sun. That does not work. Well, well, she can. She would immediately die herself the, the same millisecond she did it. But apparently she doesn't. Apparently she can open a portal to the sun without killing herself. And without melting uh, her, 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 not just the immediate surroundings, but, but all of her surroundings. Um, 
it should be stronger in game if that's what she's actually doing and shouldn't just be tickling enemies because that's stupid you can't open a portal to the sun but apparently wisp can so that, that puts her in the s tier okay gauss can run really fast guys he can run really really fast but there is some things he can do with like his his run powers and his like overheating and stuff yeah he can he can like shoot out heat from her his vents i guess and just blast an area with the heat and he can also like flash freeze enemies so that they're just like they're actually like turned to ice or not ice i guess it's just like freeze drying them <laughs> or something he can, free he can freeze dry enemies which is kind of creepy um i guess that puts him in the c tier he's also so fast that like you can't do anything you can't you can't even react before you're dead but it's still sort of small scale what he can do Hey, remember how I said that Hydroid can summon a pocket dimension that's just water and then he sucks you in and then you drown? Well, what if you suck, get sucked into some sort of impossible space where you get crushed together with all your friends in a reality that exists only of stomach acid? <laughs> that's Grendel. He can also turn himself into a ball and then he can just bounce around and crush everything and break the bones of everything in his path. That is that is the less frightening one. The more frightening is being able to suck people into a pocket dimension made of stomach acid. Uh, that is horrifying. <laughs> that is absolutely horrifying. And we're going to put him in the reality breaking A tier here. Um... I never ever want to face off against Grendel for any reason. Okay, so you might be wondering <clears throat> why I have this is triple S tier up here and nothing has gone in it. That is because we were waiting for Protea. Because she has time powers. And that is the dumbest. That is the most powerful Warframe. If you have the ability to manipulate time, that trumps everything. That is the most powerful power that you could possibly have. She can rewind time. She can snapshot herself so that she can save scum and go back in time and redo something over and over again until she succeeds. She created some sort of pocket dimension in the void where she locked Parvo's Granum, where where it's it's a small place where time doesn't pass that's apparently something she can do the first time you're sent in there to fight against her she rewinds time back so that it never happens even though you retain all your memories from it she still rewinds time so that it never happened this is completely nuts everything about protea is completely nuts None of it should be possible. Uh, she can manipulate time that trumps everything else. I don't care that Mag can change the rotation of a planet, because Protea can go back in time to before Mag did that, and then she can kill Mag before Mag did that. Protea, yeah. That is the, that is the most powerful Warframe, canonically, out of all of them. Any sort of time manipulation powers just breaks everything. There's a reason why even like Rick and Morty said that like that's the one thing that they're never gonna do. They're never gonna do time travel because that just breaks everything. Do you, do you remember the old show Heroes? How Heroes was cool until, you know, uh, oh, now we have time powers. Now the story is falling apart. Yeah, it's Protea. She's the most powerful Warframe. Alright, Zaku is a bit hard to get a handle of because we don't know exactly what Zaku's powers were when back when Zaku was three different Warframes. Now it's just this weird void fusion of stuff. But Zaku can rip enemies' guns from them and turn them back on them. But that's okay. She, Zaku can lock people in place. Okay. Um, Zaku's powers are very sort of like vague and hard to define and stuff like that. Clearly, it's not just normal soldier level. It's it's some sort of void infused powers, but it's 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 too vague to even get like sort of a good grip on what Zaku can actually do. So uh, we're gonna put Zaku in the Z tier. Okay, so Lavos is an alchemist. Lavos can manipulate the elements. 
lavas can can create sprays of acid and fire and whatever and just coat entire areas in, in guck. But the most impressive thing, if you read Lavos Leverian, is that Lavos took an Archimedean Javi, turned this Archimedean into goop, into just biological mush, and then transmuted it into one of the snakes that is like circling around Lavos. So Lavos can actually turn a life form into... Lavos turned a human into a snake. <laughs> so, so, so Lavos can, it seems, manipulate reality at will. And that puts Lavos at least into the A tier. Like, the sky's the limit here. Lavos can take the building you live in and turn it into a cupcake. Whatever, right? So the only reason why Laos isn't higher is because we haven't actually seen Laos do anything of that magnitude. But he probably can. Okay, so Sevagoth is in the same area as Necros. Sevagoth the, the Reaper. Because Sevagoth can drain people of their life force and use it to power himself. Canonically, Sevagoth sucks up your soul... To power his shadow. <laughs> which. Which. He can. He can devour your soul. <laughs> okay. Is that S tier? Is that S tier that he can devour your soul? Might be. I might have to put Sevagoth in the S tier. Because of the implication. Just because of the implication. Yarelli in the Way of Rider quest was overpowered by a single corpus dude and he wrestled her to the ground and he beat the shit out of her and she couldn't do a thing about it. Yeah. All right, so Caliban's got the sentient powers, okay? And it's all sort of like just laser blasts, right? It's energy beams and... And that's cool and all. It's destructive. You can cover an entire area in laser blasts and energy beams and everyone's afraid of it. Ooh, the sentients are coming. They're gonna kill us all. It's just not very exciting, lore-wise. It's, it's strong. I'm gonna put him up here in the B tier. Because you can shoot energy beams in every direction. It's just a bit boring. It's strong, but boring. So Gyre has the same powers as Volt. <laughs> ooh, Tesla coil. Ooh, ooh mag electro, whatever. She's just got the same power as Volt. They just made Volt again. So if Volt's in the B tier, then Gyre is also in the B tier. Because for some reason, they thought that we need to have two Warframes that have electricity powers. But, alright. Alright, she's... It's got electricity powers. That's B tier. And finally, we got Styanax. Styanax is again down in the soldier class. He's very powerful in game. He's fun. I love playing Styanax. But if you look at it lore wise, he's just a dude with a sp <laughs> he's just a dude with a spear and a shield, right? He can yeah, we can summon some of the old warriors from the past to chuck spears and stuff. But it's still it's just he's a dude with a spear and a shield. That's it. That's, that's what he is. Alright, that's the list, people. This is the objective, 100% correct list of how powerful all the Warframes are canonically. Not in-game, but canonically. All the way up from the Proteas, all the way down to the Yarellis. Uh, if there is anything on the list that you, like, absolutely disagree with and you think I got, like, super wrong, let me know. Um, wh who have I overlooked? Who has some sort of reality-breaking power that I didn't know about? L let me know in the comments. And uh, I will see you guys again tomorrow for something completely different.